All right, I got this generator uh, from my neighbor across the street, and I just hooked up a battery. It does have electric starter on it, and uh, so we do have power. And so let's see if it spins over. Wow, sounds like it's trying to fire up. <clears throat> I'm gonna hit it with a little starting fluid and we'll see what happens. Not bad for a barn find, huh? It's actually a diesel. Lombardini. Lombardini. 401 cc. Seven kilowatt generator. Built in 2004. Diesel. Pretty cool. I got some hoses and stuff to fix here but doesn't look like too much and it's got a plastic uh, gas tank which is great so I know it's not rusted or anything it's dry but it actually looks pretty clean in there all right so we'll get it up to the house and uh, get some lines changed get it cleaned up it, I did check the oil before I cranked it the oil was fine all right all right I got the old generator running um, I had to use a temporary fuel tank here, uh, so I got the uh, suction line going to the pump, the lift pump, and then I got a return line uh, going in there as well. I had to do that because the, uh, let's see, right here, the uh, fuel tank fitting was clogged up and it broke when I tried to get it off. I was able to order a new one, a new valve for the tank, but we had the um, hurricane coming a couple weeks ago, and uh, we had to get this ready to use, so I just used this temporary fuel tank, and it worked great. We ended up having to run it for about eight hours, and uh, I had to replace this outlet here, just a GFCI, and then and this is a 30, uh, 30 amp, 120 volt, and they sell these at Home Depot and Lowe's. Um, it's a pigtail made for this. And that gives you three, three more um, regular plugs there. And then of course it's got the 240 volt. Um, you can switch it. You can't do both, I don't think. Um, 240 or 120. But everything worked great. I, I had five uh, extension cords had four going into my house, and then I sent one over to the neighbor so he could keep his refrigerator running as well. But what was wrong with this thing was the, this is the um, injection pump right here. It was um, froze up in the closed position, I guess, when it had been stored. Uh, I guess it was in the closed position. It just kind of seized up from sitting. So I finally, I wasn't able to get any fuel here. I was getting fuel up to the the pump from the lift pump down here with the it's got a little primer so I was getting fuel up here at this hose but nothing coming out of here so I took this out two bolts and it was locked up like I said froze up it's just like a almost like a cam uh, lifter with a spring on it and I just soaked it in uh, Marvel mystery oil overnight and the next day started messing with it and squeezing it and it finally popped loose and I was able to get it working pretty good and I put it back in and it, it cranked right up and run fine. I'll, I ordered a bunch of new fuel line and I uh, got a new valve and I got some new T's. A new T for this one and a new T for uh, this one right here. So I'm gonna get all that stuff installed, get the tank uh, working 
I got my battery uh, just kind of temporarily tie wrapped on here. I got to get a, um, a hole down for that. Like I said, I was in a rush to get it going because we had the storm coming and it worked great. And it didn't use very much fuel at all. Um, this was, you know, about up to here and it's down to about right here after eight hours. So it's really good on gas. I do need to adjust the idle. I think it's a little bit high. So yeah, let me get the hose out and uh, the valve for the tank and get it going. So here's what I ordered. Um, I got uh, 10 foot of um, quarter inch fuel line. Uh, got a couple of brass tees here. Um, got a, a two pack of valves. Um, it's like $10, you know, for a two pack. Oh, something like that. All this stuff was really cheap on Amazon. Got a, a two pack of filters. Um, these are kind of unique, I guess, for the diesel because they have a return also. Seems like everything's got a return on these. So you just shove this bushing up in the tank and then shove the this barb up in there and it's, it'll seal up. So let's get that going. Before I reroute the uh, fuel lines, I'm going to show you how well this thing runs, uh, even with the temporary tank. I'm going to have to put on headphones or uh, earmuffs because it's pretty loud, and I'll adjust the volume on the video so it doesn't blast you out as well. I'm not going to be able to talk, so, so um, you throw on some earmuffs and uh, fire it up. All right, here we go. Not bad, huh? All right, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, redoing these fuel lines. Um, got the fitting in the tank there, so it's ready to go. Uh, it's got a return fitting up here. It's, everything's good there. Uh, the only thing I'm missing is this uh, air box cover. Got a filter, but there's a plastic cover that bolts on here as well, so i got to try to get one of those. Uh, the neighbor said he may have it somewhere. Um, so we're going to go look over there in his storage shed and see if it got left over there. So yeah, um, I just got it strapped to a pallet. I was using it, um, moving it around with my forklift uh, on my tractor. I think I may eventually put like an, an axle with some pretty big wheels and a handle, almost like a wagon where I can move it around on its own without having to get the tractor out and all that stuff. Alright, I got all my uh, fuel lines rerun. So everything in the blue is a return line. I got the new filter on there. Return line from the injector. And this is um, fuel line. This stuff came from Tractor Supply. And the black stuff, I got some from Tractor Supply and some from Amazon. Um, Everything's tie wrapped and clamped. I made sure I got it out of the way of my um, oil fill cap. I had to make myself a little diagram because it's kind of confusing with all the lines. And I got everything uh, tie wrapped in place. Everything's 
it's getting sturdy filter is getting sturdy I've already started pumping it um, the filter is about half full I can I can still get to my oil dipstick um, still easily get to the shutoff I think I may put a cable on here and run it up here and have like a, a lever or something a little easier access um, return line to the top of the tank and then uh, the main fuel line I got it hooked up and tie wrapped I got the fuel on so I haven't started it up yet it might take it a minute to prime so let me put on my earmuffs and we'll give it a shot I had to adjust the fuel filter there I had to make sure this um, vent return was going straight up and down it was sucking a little bit of air and uh, had a loose clamp here I got that straightened out I'm gonna do one more start up on it and uh, we'll check the we'll check the voltage here and make sure it's at least 120 volts. So let me get my earmuffs on again. All right, contact. Sounds good, runs good. I think I'm gonna rig up a little cable to go from this shutoff valve. That way you can just uh, pull it shut. Maybe a little cable to run up here and then mount it somewhere up here with a little lever um, that'll stay put. When you shut it off, it'll stay there and you don't have to hold it. So that'll be my next step if I can find one of those. So anyway, if I haven't said it, this is a I think it's a, uh, this is the name of the generator, Voltmaster America Smooth Wave. But it's an Italian made um, Lombardini diesel engine. I also thought about maybe adding a second muffler to it, quiet it down a little bit. It's pretty loud. Oh, yeah, let me go get my small battery and try it out, see if it'll crank it. All right, I got the lawn and garden battery in there. Uh, this is, um, you see the age on it. I put it on my new battery charger and did the recondition on it, and this thing works awesome now. It said it was at um, like 13.7 volts on the charger. So um, let's give it a shot here and see if it'll fire this big thing up. Contact. No problem. Alright, I think that's about it for this video. Thanks again for watching Projects with Paul. We'll see you next time.